One billion of us own a smartphone, and we know how addicting it can be. One former Google employee says this is no accident. Indeed, it is by design. And he became troubled by the relentless efforts of app developers to keep us glued to the gadgets. So the goal is to keep us on our devices longer. Why? For any company whose business model is advertising or engagement-based advertising, meaning they care about the amount of time someone spends on the product, uh, you know, they make more money the more time people spend. So the game becomes, how can I throw different persuasive techniques to get people to stay, to spend as long as possible, and to come back tomorrow? You know, if the, if the thought process that went into building these applications, Facebook being the first of them to really understand it, that thought process was all about how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible. And that means that we need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while um, because someone liked or commented on a photo or a post or whatever. And that's going to get you to contribute more content. And that's going to get you, you know, more likes and comments. I mean, it's a, it's a, val it's a social validation feedback loop that, that it's like a, I mean, it's exactly the kind of thing that a, that a hacker like myself would come up with because you're exploiting a vulnerability in, in human psychology. And I just, I, th I think that we, you know, we, the inventors, creators, you know, and it's, it's me, it's Mark, it's the, you know, Kevin Systrom at Instagram, it's all of these people, um, understood this consciously, and we did it anyway. I think in the back, deep, deep recesses of our minds, we, we kind of knew something bad could happen. But I think the way we defined it was not like this. It literally is a point now where I think we have created tools that are ripping apart the social fabric of how society works. That is truly where we are. And I would encourage all of you as the future leaders of the world to really internalize how important this is. If you feed the beast, that beast will destroy you. If you push back on it, we have a chance to control it and rein it in. And it is a point in time where people need to hard break from some of these tools and the things that you rely on. The short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops that we have created are destroying how society works. No civil discourse, no cooperation, misinformation, mistruth, and it's not an American problem. This is not about Russian ads. This is a global problem. So we are in a really bad state of affairs right now, in my opinion. It is, it is eroding the core foundations of how people behave by and between each other. Um, and I don't have a good solution. You know, my solution is I just don't use these tools anymore. You know, bad actors can now manipulate large swaths of people to do anything you want. It's just a, it's a really, really bad state of affairs. And we compound the problem, right? We curate our lives around this perceived sense of perfection because we get rewarded in these short-term signals, hearts, likes, thumbs up, and we conflate that with value and we conflate it with truth. And instead, what it really is is fake, brittle popularity that's short-term, and that leaves you even more, and admit it, vacant and empty before you did it. You don't realize it, but you are being programmed. To control someone through social networks doesn't necessarily mean that you have his videos or pictures. Rather, you can also put some programs on those social medias to change his behavior, to destroy his morals and beliefs, and to take him away from the real values of his life. This is what they are doing with you. They make your mind busy with these things, so that you don't have any time for other important issues. Or in other words, they make you a slave of the system through these networks. And through those specific tools, Shaitan steals your time, because there's almost an infinite scrolling tab which traps you and sucks your lifetime. 
In fact, you are sitting alone, busy with those networks and think that you are connected with the entire world. That's how they divided the community and ruled the societies. The Prophet says in the hadith, لَن تَزُولَ قَدَمَ عَبْدٍ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حَتَّى يُسْأَلَ عَنْ أَرْبَعَ The feet of the son of Adam will not move, will not go away from to anywhere until the person, he or she, are questioned about four things. عَنْ عُمْرِهِ فِيمَا أَفْنَاهِ about his or her life, how they spent it. As many of these people who become so addicted to social media and, and become like, oh, I, I have 5,000 followers. You know, they, they start having a sense of false accomplishment. You start talking to them after five and a half, or as the report said, nine hours a day of being on the internet or social media. You ask them, what have you done for your daily life? What positive thing did you do for your family, for your children, for your parents, for your neighbor, for the ummah in general? And they have a sense of, you know, I, may, I, I, I posted something on Facebook and I got 200 likes. And they walk around like they have done some real serious accomplishment. The concept amazes me, man. And our lives have become so attached to it that it brings unnecessary stress and unnecessary sadness. Why? Because you're so caught up with how other people are living their lives that the only thing you can see in your life is what's missing. And you stop seeing what you have. And really I find it interesting. And again, forgive me, you know, these are just my person. Have we become so shallow that I need to let the world know where I am what I'm eating, where I'm going, and who I'm with. And have you become so shallow that you need to follow people now? I don't understand, like people take selfies. Just, just had lunch. <laughs> well, like, you know, look, it's funny, but wallahi, you don't understand the effects it has on individuals, even marriages. And I'm telling you, you know, and maybe this is a bit extreme, but I believe that people are living a lie. You know, girls who take these, even guys now, what's the post called? You know, when you do this, this, what's, 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 what? I don't know what it's called, but anyway, so, you know, people who take selfies and then put it up on the internet, I find it amazing. If you're so sincere, why don't you take a photo as soon as you wake up in the morning? You know, while you still got those things in your eyes. No, the picture is selected. The picture is selected. And I always take a photo when I'm on a holiday or I'm having something, right? And I, I, and, and, and I go to extreme efforts to show the world that I'm living the life. But in truth, you're not living the life. You're a human being like everyone else. And what tends to happen is, and, and, and really, wallahi, I say to people, even if you are happy, don't show it to the world. Because people will start to hate on you, they will start wishing to have what you have, and they will start wishing that Allah takes what you have and gives it to them. But my brother and sister, Allah didn't give you that. Allah says, I'm not going to question you on things I haven't given you. Why do you make things difficult on yourself? Brothers who drive around all day, working all day, looking at every woman that comes his way, admiring and lusting and Allahu Akbar, he comes home and he says to me, man, I'm sick of my wife. Yeah, of course you're sick of your wife. Had you spent 10% of the time you spend looking at other people's women, had you just spent that time looking at what Allah gave you, maybe you would appreciate her as well. But you don't. You're looking at the things that don't belong to you. You look at things that are not yours. You're trying to live the life that is not yours. Wallahi, just live your life. The social networks are one of the biggest fitness of this time because they are the easiest way for your enemy to manipulate you and to take your whole attention on meaningless desires. 
and this is what shaitan loves the most. Just take in mind that whenever you post something or write something which reflects immorality, a great number of people will see and read it. And when every individual sees it, there will be a sin deposited in your account. And you will be responsible for that in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, subhanAllah, there's a word that we might say and only the people here could hear it. But there is a word that you might or we might type on the internet and you don't know, you have no control. How many people will read that? How many people will actually see that? You know, it's not only what we say with our tongue. Because what you write, somebody else is going to read. What we write, somebody else is going to repeat. You know, we've seen people in Muslim countries leave Islam, become atheists as a result of engagement with social media like Facebook and Twitter and chat rooms. They go into a field of fitna that they are not equipped with knowledge to combat. Also, when you like a post which contains immorality, this like will cause the database of that social network to push the content to a greater number of people. Now imagine how big your sin will be if you like or share those contents. We're not gonna yell at him. No, we're, of course not. That is a warm hoodie. Let me yeah, see. no, it's a thick hoodie. We, it's um, it's a company hoodie. We print okay. our mission on the inside. What? Oh, oh my really? God, the inside of the hoodie, everybody. Take a moment. Oh. What is it? Making the. Making the world more open and connected. Oh my God, it's like a secret cult. Cool. <laughs> Look at that, making the world open and connected. Stream graph platform and this weird symbol in the middle that is probably for the Illuminati. According to Department of Homeland Security reports, Facebook has replaced almost every other CIA information gathering program since it was launched in 2004. After years of secretly monitoring the public, we were astounded so many people would willingly publicize where they live, their religious and political views, an alphabetized list of all their friends' personal email addresses, phone numbers, hundreds of photos of themselves, uh, and even status updates about what they were doing moment to moment. It is truly a dream come true for the CIA. Much of the credit belongs to CIA agent Mark Zuckerberg, who runs the day-to-day -day Facebook operation for the agency. The decorated agent, codenamed the Overlord, was recently awarded the prestigious Medal of Intelligence Commendation for his work with the Facebook program, which he has called, quote, the single most powerful tool for population control ever created. Prophet ﷺ says, imagine the moment of death where the tongue becomes so heavy and you can't say subhanAllah, bihamdi, you cannot, you, we spend so much time on social media and, and what's strange enough is that subhanAllah, many of us have the Quran on our devices, yet the day and the two and the three go by and we don't open the Quran. We should be scared that this app, the Quran app that we have on our cell phones or our iPads will come on the Day of Judgment. The Prophet ﷺ on the Day of Judgment will, will complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
وقال الرسول يا رب إن قوم اتخذوا هذا القرآن مهجورا Oh my Lord Muslims have neglected this book Muslims have neglected this book